everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Rachel Ammer. Now the seasons are changing. Autumn is arriving, winter is coming. Dare I say it, don't hate me for saying it, but winter is coming. So I thought this was a great time to share some super warming, hearty, delicious vegan recipes with you guys. Now I've got two recipes to share with you guys. We're making a spaghetti with roasted butternut squash and sage and tomatoes and kale and garlic. And it all just combines to make this really delicious spaghetti dish. And the other recipe I'm gonna share with you guys is a beefless beef stew. I say beefless because we are not using beef. No animals will be harmed in the making of this stew. We are using some of the techniques to make a beef stew, except no beef, which means it is gonna be really flavorsome and rich and delicious. I cannot wait to share these recipes with you guys. I really, really hope you like them. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you're excited for the autumn recipes and subscribe to my channel because I am here every week with new recipes and new content to share with you. So let us get into these autumn recipes and I really, really hope you guys like them and I'm sorry that autumn is coming for you summer babes out there. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is chop up some carrots. I used about four, and I've also got a handful of shallots that I thinly sliced. I've got some potatoes that I also chopped in half, and I'm gonna oil the pan and add my shallots and sweat them out, saute them down. Then add four cloves of garlic. I like to use a lot of garlic in my recipes if you haven't noticed already. Then just mix and saute them adding some salt and some black pepper. Sauteing them in, sweating them down, and then I added a handful of leeks. Now this was two leeks and I just wanna cook them down. I don't love leeks, so I love to sweat them out because I don't like them too strong. And then I've got some thyme from the garden and some carrots and I'm gonna mix it in. I will take the sticks of the thyme out at the end. And as you can see at the bottom here, this is where it's kind of caramelized and there's a lot of flavor in there. It's not burnt, it's caramelized flavor. So to add an extra depth of flavor to this stew, we are using red wine. Now this is a vegan friendly red wine. You will need to look out for that because they are not all vegan friendly. This is a Merlot wine for anyone interested. I don't actually drink wine on a day to day, but I love adding it to recipes. So it goes really well with this stew. It's gonna add a punch of flavor, depth of flavor and added richness, which is just gonna make it extra, extra hearty and delicious. So I'm adding about 150 milliliters of red wine and I'm gonna cook it down, sweat off the alcohol until you've got about half of the liquid left. And that's really, really important. Then I forgot to add my bay leaves and I'm just adding some corn flour just to help the gravy thicken up. I'm also adding some tomato puree for some extra punch of flavor, mixing it in. Adding some vegan Worcester sauce. I feel like I can't say that word properly so uh, I apologize in advance for how I pronounce it. And I'm gonna mix that in, get all the flavors combined. Now we are gonna add some vegetable stock to this. Now you can actually buy beef vegan vegetable stock, if that makes any sense. It's basically beef vegetable stock that happens to be vegan, but you do really have to look out for them. I find them really hard to find. I prefer just getting vegetable stock. Or if you can make your own homemade beef vegan vegetable stock, those are the tastiest and those ones work the best. If you guys want a recipe, please do let me know because I can share one with you, especially as we get to winter and it's kind of like, gravy season. So let me know if you want me to share one with you, but if not, just have a regular vegetable stock, homemade stock, just anything that's vegan stock that's tasty and you like. But for now, we're gonna use this vegetable stock and it's going straight in there. So adding in a whole bunch of vegetable stock and then some tomatoes, mix it all together and also adding in my potatoes. So you wanna make sure that you've got enough liquid so that it's kind of covering the base level of your food, if that makes sense. I'm gonna leave this cook and simmer. Meanwhile, we're gonna make our meat replacement and we are using oyster mushrooms. I love adding oyster mushrooms because they add this kind of chewy, meaty consistency to the stew, which is just insane. If you don't wanna use mushrooms, you can use any other meat replacement that you prefer to use. Whether it's seitan, texture soy protein, I don't know, whatever you prefer, I prefer mushrooms. 
So I'm just gonna slice up, roughly chop up the oyster mushrooms. You can tear them apart, you can leave them as they are. It's just up to your preference. So now we are going to season them up. You can season them up however you would season up your meat potentially. I decided to do smoked paprika, liquid smoke, coconut aminos, and maple syrup to get that kind of smoky, sweet flavor that I really, really love. But you can do any kind of seasoning that you prefer. So I'm just gonna fry these in a pan. You wanna make sure that you haven't just washed your mushrooms because they won't cook so well. I like to wash my mushrooms the day I get them so they dry out by the time I want to cook them. So once you fry them, I like to kind of push them down, get that kind of crispy outer layer. And there you have these super tasty, delicious mushrooms. So we're just gonna add that to our pot, get the mushrooms in there. Now stews are quite oily because meat has a lot of fat. So if you wanna kind of replicate that, you can add a tablespoon of your favorite oil. Maybe it's avocado oil, any of your favorites. Mix in, let that cook down, and then it is finished. I add some fresh parsley on top, and this was it. With stews like this, I especially like them the next day when the seasoning has had even more time to kind of marinate together so rich and delicious and hearty ah so i've literally just put some in a bowl oh it smells so good and it looks like there's meat in it which is crazy there are no animals harmed in this but for anyone who has a nostalgia around meat dishes this is for you and everyone else but especially if you just love the look of meat in your food this is for you look at that Yep. Oh, that's lovely. It's so rich, it's so tasty, it's so hearty. The mushrooms add this texture of chewiness, but not too chewy, like comforting, slightly chewy, slightly tender, and we season them up so well that they are so flavorful. It just adds so much more to it. This has made me so, so happy. Can you tell this is so delicious? It's still so rich and there's so much flavor and it's just really, really tasty. And it's such a simple recipe and it's so tasty. And it does not need meat. I actually wanted to share it with you guys with some celeriac mash, but it's not quite in season yet because I couldn't find it anywhere. I am in love with it. It just screams autumn, winter coziness. Oh. This is the kind of thing I would make and sit and watch Netflix. So now I wanna share with you guys the spaghetti recipe. Now we're using roasted butternut squash and we've got cherry tomatoes, kale, garlic, nutritional yeast, and it just comes to this like really simple, delicious spaghetti dish. So let us just get straight into it. So I'm gonna start off by peeling my butternut squash, which is quite a yellow one, interestingly, and I'm just gonna slice it up and chop it into small pieces. Then to a baking tray, I'm gonna add my butternut squash, add some olive oil, go in with a bit of maple syrup, and adding lots and lots of fresh sage, and a bit of salt and pepper. Then you just wanna mix these together, get everything coated nice and evenly. And then you wanna throw it in a preheated oven for about 50 minutes. We're gonna roast up these beautiful, sweet cherry tomatoes. I love cherry tomatoes. You can use plum tomatoes if you prefer. I just prefer cherry tomatoes. We're gonna get them nice and sweet and flavorful. We're gonna add some garlic, some balsamic vinegar, some salt and pepper, bring out some really amazing flavors and they're just gonna taste amazing. So I'm just gonna season my tomatoes with salt and I've got a balsamic vinegar glaze and I'm also adding a pinch of olive oil. Then I am squeezing in some fresh garlic. And then I mix it all together. Now this only takes about 20 minutes, so you wanna put it in towards the end of the butternut squash cooking. And now I'm preparing some kale, so I'm adding a bit of salt, some lots and lots of black pepper, adding some garlic granules. You can also use fresh garlic, but I'd run out at this point. Added some olive oil, and also added some fresh lemon juice. And I'm just gonna massage that with my clean hands. Then add it to a baking tray, now this literally takes a couple of minutes to cook. You don't want it to burn out in there. Then I'm gonna cook my spaghetti, then I am sauteing some garlic and some shallots in the pan. 
just to brown them up and caramelize. And this is the cooked spaghetti. We've got the cooked, roasted butternut squash, our flavorful tomatoes, our roasted kale. And this is all gonna come together so well. So I'm adding my spaghetti to the onions and the garlic, adding in a bunch of nutritional yeast, mixing it together, adding our tomatoes, our crispy sweet butternut squash with sage and then the kale and you're going to mix it in add some black pepper chili flakes your favorite high quality oil and just mix it together and you're left with this beautiful dish let us taste test i put it in a bowl just to make it a bit easier it just smells amazing Mm. Oh, this is beautiful. The added chili flakes add a hotness to it, which is so nice and it works so well with the garlic. You've got the sweet and kind of crispy roasted butternut squash. You've got the kale, which has bits of lemon and garlic. Mm -mm. The cherry tomatoes are bursting full of flavor and are so, so tasty. You can taste the nutritional yeast, the garlic, so tasty, so hearty. The sage, oh. Thank you all so, so much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed these autumn wintery recipes. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did. Every thumbs up counts, so if you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I am here every Sunday with new videos and new content to share with you guys. And if there's any video suggestions that you have, any recipes that might make your life as a vegan or soon to be vegan a little bit easier, let me know in the comments so I can create some content that actually really does help. So I will see you all here next week. Bye. Yeah. Yeah.